Okay, so today is going to be a big rant. I am tired of the news media telling me how to think and how to feel. This is a news item here about Adam Toledo. We all know about that. His 13-year-old kid that was shot by a police officer at like 2 in the morning. And the title of this video here is Body Camera Video Shows Fatal Shooting of 13-Year-Old Adam Toledo in Chicago. And the news reporters in this segment are going to piss me off. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. Let's go ahead and play this, but keep in mind, what I'm mostly going to be focusing on is how I interpret what they're telling me. A new body cam video of the police shooting of a 13-year-old in Chicago. Adam Toledo died two and a half weeks ago in what authorities are calling an armed confrontation. Antonia Allison here, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi, Allison. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. What is this Allison's decision? Like you asked Allison, can I be on your show? And Allison decided, hmm, okay. I'm really tired of this stuff. It's like we're sitting in Cracker Barrel and these people are just talking about what's taking place and we're supposed to be listening in on it. Hi there. Oh, wonderful to have you. I understand the city's police accountability office just released uh, that footage this afternoon. Wonderful to have you. Why? What's so wonderful about having her here? It's her job. It's what she's paid to do. Can you walk us through it? Can you walk us through it? Well, I would kind of hope so. Isn't that the whole point of why she's here? All right. I understand. That's a little bit rhetorical. I get it. Sure. It is excruciating to watch Allison. and, and the It's excruciating to watch. Maybe you find it excruciating, but how about us? I don't care how you find it. I don't care if you consider it disturbing or whatever. Don't tell me how to think. The mayor warned reporters in the community of this a couple hours ago, but that's exactly what it is. Um, the shooting transpired, really, what... What strikes you most when you first watch it is that... What strikes me most when I first watch it? Well, no, you don't tell me that. I will tell you what strikes me most when I watch it. I don't care what struck you the most. This happened in just a matter of seconds, in under 20 seconds. You see the officer step out of his car, uh, pursue Adam Toledo down an alleyway. Uh, Adam slows down against a fence, sort of turns toward the officer as he makes commands for Adam to put his hands up in the air. And the shooting happens uh, faster, frankly, than you can, can process the scene. Some people expected that it would be clear that Adam had a gun in his hand, that he had used it or was planning to use it. That is not clear from the video that we've been in, able to watch just in these last couple minutes. Well, whose opinion are you stating there? When you say it's not clear, is, is that your opinion? Or are you deciding for us? Uh, you sort of see him turn toward and listen to the officer and uh, sort of within the blink of an eye, he shot, collapses to the ground. And then most of the video uh, of the body cam video worn by the officer involved in the shooting is officers trying to save Adam Toledo's life. And we're not going to show you that. Mm -mm. That will be edited out. Uh, so the shooting happens in a matter of seconds. And then most of it is the attempt to do CPR. People asking him to stay with them if he can hear them. And you do not hear any signs of life. Uh, from this 13-year-old boy. and So the police officers are saying, come on, man, hang in there. Don't leave us. Come on, fight. Don't die, okay? That might present a little humanity for the officers. It might make people feel sympathetic to those officers that are working on him. That's not necessarily the officer that shot him, but the other officers, the ones that are trying to save his life. Oh, yeah, let's just cut that part out because that might paint certain officers in a sympathetic light. We can't have that. So we'll edit it out. Did we do similar things with Kyle Rittenhouse? Oh, absolutely. The part where he's helping that BLM protester right after he said, we don't have non-lethal, they cut that out. Might make Kyle look like he's not out to shoot BLM protesters after all. So we edited it away. And 
It is painful to watch. The video is illuminating, but there it is painful to watch. According to whom? You? We don't care how you feel about it. I didn't find it painful. I mean, I might find it disturbing depending on what I see. But I'm, I'm the one that should be deciding how to interpret this video, not you. There are still so many questions um, reporters are going to have today and over the coming days, Allison. Uh, the lawyer for the Toledo family, uh, Antonia, is saying they watched the footage on Tuesday, calling it difficult and heartbreaking, uh, which is in line uh, with what you have been describing to us. Oh, OK. So the lawyer has come on and described how we should feel. And you guys agree with him that this is how we should be interpreting it, that this is how we should be interpreting it. What are folks in Chicago saying about this video and just saying in general about what happened here? Well, right now I'm actually in the neighborhood uh, that the Toledo family is from and people are, you know, we just received this video. And so many folks here haven't seen it yet or are still processing. But for days now, activists have been warning people to be careful when this video comes out. They knew that it would be excruciating, uh, that there was no way that there could be a video of a, a 13 year old shot and killed that wouldn't be unbelievably traumatic to watch. Um, and there's concern that people who live here and knew his family or, or worked around his family, uh, that it would, uh, that seeing that video over and over again on social media or in public would do more harm than it would do good. And, and those calls are continuing ahead of protests that are scheduled tonight for around 5.30 and 6 p.m. I want you to take a listen to uh, what Mayor Lori Lightfoot also shared in a press conference earlier today. Uh, well, let's not even listen to her. There's only so much inanity I can handle in a single day. But you can see what I'm talking about here. The news, back when I was a kid, told you what happened. They said, here's what took place. Here's what we know. But all of a sudden, down in the 1980s somewhere, it changed. And it moved into this sort of family thing where the news reporters are talking to each other, and we just listen in on their conversation. And so they thank each other. They, they tell each other, this is a really heartbreaking story. This is very disturbing. And a heartwarming story about a recent event here where some grandma got a wheelchair. Why is that heartwarming? Maybe I don't like grandmas. Maybe I hate hearing about grandmas getting wheelchairs. That's for me to decide, not you. But somewhere along the line, they started telling us how we should interpret the news, how we should feel about it. And so we get tons of, yes, this is very unsettling. In a tragic series of events, and questions remain, why did a 17-year-old kid walk around Kenosha with an AR-15 rifle? Well, we know the answer. But the way that they do this, the way that they phrase these things, it's all designed to instill a certain image in your brain about innocence and guilt. And it works. Boy, does it ever work. So I'm tired of it. I'm tired of them thanking each other. Thank you, Bob, for that story. Like Bob is doing us all a big favor. And then they ask questions to each other. Well, Rachel, uh, why do you think? Again, this is all part of that. The enlightened ones hanging out at the Cracker Barrel talking about the news events. And we, the audience, we're just sitting there listening to them talk to each other, thanking each other, telling each other how wonderful they are and how wonderful it is to hear from each other. And I don't know when this shit started, but I'm really getting frankly tired of it. I don't want any news reporter to tell me whether the story that's coming up is heartwarming, disturbing, unsettling. I'll be the one that decides that. Like my video and subscribe to my channel.